On this episode, I get pissed off. Chuck, and this is episode 150.5 of the Ask Gary V Show. And if you feel the energy off the get, it's because I'm pissed that this is not episode 152 because we did a very special 360 video episode out there that you're all gonna freak for because you're gonna be able to watch the show and then click and see everything around and there's a ton of shit going on and Vayner people ask me and it's incredible, it's phenomenal, but I taped it two goddamn days ago. I expected it to go up there. We sh- end the shoot, we used the Vayner Media video production team, not our squad, but nobody from my squad said that that wasn't gonna be up that day. And then, then I hear, the end of this week or early next week. I'm like, what kind of fucking timing is that? That would have meant that I don't have an episode for like eight, nine days, unacceptable. I'm here to tape episodes. So I, I, I don't understand. I get angry, then I, then I put a little pressure all of a sudden, yeah, okay, we'll have it at the end of the day yesterday. No show. I put out an Instagram picture and said, you missed the show, it's coming tomorrow. I look like a dick face. I don't like looking like a dick face. And then today, surely it's gonna be done. No, I have no show. And then Steve on the way back, like, I don't know, I think you should do something else because I'm not sure if it's gonna be done at the end of the day. But I'm not either. So we're doing episode 150.5. In between 150, which was the last show that I did, I don't know, 700 years ago, and this episode that I taped years ago that's gonna come out one day, episode 151. The only saving grace is it's gonna be so phenomenal and that you're gonna watch it 19 times you're gonna try to find it different things. Might be your first 360 video experience in a phone or on desktop. Uh, you don't have to put on the Oculus or any of that stuff. You'll be able to watch it and click. It's gonna be cool but not happy about it. Just not happy about it. Uh, that's it. Gonna have a good show. Gotta how to bang this one out because I have to get my Jets prediction out. All right, India. Let's get into the show. Oh. Okay, yeah. that was a little better that time. Yeah, it was better. Go. Malik asks, how can I become a really good listener? Malik, I think uh, good listening comes from actual intent and actually wanting to be a good listener. Like anything in the world, when you want to beat something, be something and beat, I want to beat some things right now. If you want to be something, um, you need to uh, actually mean it. Meaning like, I decided I wanted to get in better shape and health, I just went out and did it. Like you just, like. Words are such shit. You know what's the matter with a lot of people? Like a lot of people. A lot of people watching this show, a lot of people in the world, a lot of people is there's only actions. You know, I always talk about intent is what matters, right? Like at the end of the day, I'm pumped with intent. And every time with that, I get tons of comments with like scripture from the Bible, I think. I apologize, I'm not up on that. Like, but I think I'm pretty sure where it's like, intent is a good, the leading thing to like, basically it says like, intent's great, but like you can say you have good intent, but if your actions are, you're doing wrong things. Like, and, and I get it, like to me, like intent is the starting point, so I think it's nice to start there, but I agree, I agree. Words are the problem. Malik, you wanna be a good listener? Be a good fucking listener. Like, well, like, like, when somebody's talking, listen. Like when when you're listen, when somebody's saying something, listen and try to do that. Because listening is not just listening. Listening is listening and then doing something about it. Like there's a comma. There's a the definition of listening is consuming it and doing something about it. The problem is most people aren't doing things about it. Just a whole lot of talking. A whole lot of talking going on in the game. I'm Jess. Jess. Jess asks. I love you, man, and everything you do. But I also hate you because I'm a little jelly of your success. How can I get past that? Like jelly, like Beyonce jelly? Like my toned ass, or? No. <laughs> I'm jealous, I understand. I, thanks for the reaction, you thought I was confused? I'm not confused. We're uh, How can I get past that? I'm jelly of your success. Yeah, I get it. I mean, look, uh, I, think it's, I think being jealous of my success is good. I'm jealous of other people's success, but not really, meaning, Try to change it from a negative to a positive. I'm inspired by people's success, even though you know, being inspired by somebody and being jealous of them is literally just an inch off and they're cousins, they're kissing cousins. 
being inspired by somebody and being jealous of someone is literally a kissing cousin's game. And so I'm too egotistical to say that I'm jealous of somebody, but I'm definitely motivated uh, and recognize, much like the last answer, the results are the results. I'm talking big shit, guys. Like, I don't know if you understand what I'm doing. I'm really setting myself up for failure. I've told the world that I'm gonna buy the New York Jets. I need to amass $10 billion to buy the New York Jets. If I amass $1 billion, a stunning percentage of the people watching this show will define me as not winning. Because the narrative has been built that this is my thing. Like, do you understand that when Woody Johnson decides to sell or passes away and the estate's up for sale in 20, 30 years, God, Willie, Woody, 50 years for you, God bless, whatever. But whenever that happens, if I'm not the person at that point with the narrative I'm gonna paint all these years that buys it, people are gonna be like, oh, sorry, Gary. Or in whatever the Twitter or the Facebook of the world then is, which is gonna be even worse because it's probably gonna be like holograms and people are gonna just pop up and be like, sorry. I mean, literally gonna have like Princess Leia, 58 million Princess Leia's being like, sorry, dude, really wish you got it. It's just gonna be loser city. USA. I'm setting myself up because, what was the question? The question was how. <laughs> Jealous. Because, you know, I, you know, because I haven't, I put myself in such a weird position of insane success to justify success uh, in the narrative that I'm painting. Uh, so I'm inspired and I'm challenged by the people. My friend Travis can buy the Jets. I mean, he did it. Like, this is my homie that I hung out with five minutes ago. That, like, I introduced at Tahoe Tech Talk 2009 as this is the guy that none of you know on this panel, but you're all gonna know, which I'm trying to figure out if I have film of. But, like, like you know, like, like it's amazing. It's amazing. So, anyway, those kind of people, I'm not, in, I'm not jealous of Travis. I'm inspired that he executed at that level. So, I would say that, man. Just, like, make a little switch in your DNA and understand being jealous of me or anybody else, me being jealous, you guys, anybody being jealous. Jealous is a really backwards defensive uh, trait. It's gonna do you absolutely no good. Switching it slightly into I'm inspired by that and I wanna climb higher than that is a really good place to go. So, you, you need to instill a little more goodness and get a little of the badness out of there. I think the way to get badness out is to talk it out. You know, this is why I think everybody should see a therapist or, or have some outlet, uh, you know, to get bad. You need to, out, you need to talk out bad. Bad staying in your heart and soul will corrode you and it's a cancer. Spit out your bad. Too many people use their loved ones or their closest person as the person they spit to and then that person has a weird relationship with them. Find your outlet. You know, my mom and I use each other because we're able to, con- I, we got lucky, we can handle it. But, you know, if you don't have that lucky relationship, you need to find, uh, a different outlet. Thank you. I'm done. From Ash Warrior? Yeah. Ash Warrior asks, what lessons, if any, did you find from Mad Men? How is VaynerMedia differently run than Sterling Cooper? Yeah, I don't know who Sterling Cooper is. I've not watched one minute of Mad Men. I want to. I think it's kind of cool, but I've never watched Mad Men, which is interesting because I'm building, like, I, is, have you guys watched Mad Men for an episode? Do you, okay, Do you, great. So is Mad Men, is that agency the one that became the best, age, like, is the narrative play out in those eight years that they became the big dogs? Um, I mean, they're kind of always, like. The, always were good? Yeah, they're good, and then they're small, and then they grow into this big company, and they get acquired by another company. Great. So I, sh- I really want to watch it. You know, what's really cool is I'm glad I didn't watch it because I know so much more about the ad world now that when and if I ever watch it on a vacation, on a binge, maybe me and Lizzie just want to check out and like lay in a, in a cabin in Utah for four days and watch two shows straight through, which sounds really exciting because I want I love checking out on my vacations. I, I'm always, I always laugh. People don't think, I mean, I check the f- out on vacations. I don't give a crap's ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like that one? Uh, so, so I haven't watched the show. I don't know what they're doing. I don't care what anybody's doing. I'm doing my thing, mine, my way, always from the gut. I don't care what anybody else does or how they do it. My way's always better because it's for me and I know myself and I know how I'm gonna win. And so I don't watch other things. I don't look at other people. I don't need North, any North Stars. I do me the whole way, always, all the way through. Is he gonna be here? Where's he gonna be? Here? Maybe over your face. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey Gary, it's Mark Cuban. I'd like to know what your go-to interview questions are. Questions you have to ask every candidate that you interview every time. Inquiring minds want to know. Cubes with a nice hat. I like that. Mark, uh, who's accomplished 
the in his life the goal I have, which is to own a professional sports team. So I like that. I know a lot of you are fans of of Mark, and he's a really smart dude, knows his stuff. Uh, with interviews, I really try to reverse engineer uh, what the person wants. I try to break down a person in an interview within the first few minutes of meeting them to fully trust and believe in me, which is something I try to do with all these guys on a daily basis. It's a never-ending battle from the day I try to interview to four years into our relationship. How can I disproportionately get their trust because I know my intent and my actions map to doing good things 96% of the time and, and I'd like to think 100 but sometimes there's a miscommunication on if it is the right thing. And so uh, uh, I try to get them to tell me the truth. Are you, things like I want to come to VaynerMedia to steal all your ideas and see how you do it so I can start my own agency and steal some of the people here to start it. I'm not bothered by that. I'm like cool, great, Stefan, if that's your plan, I'll help you. I'll speed that up but I expect you to work your fucking face off 19 hours a day for the next three years for me to then help you start your own thing. I don't care what you want. I don't care. I want to know what it is so I try to get to that place very quickly. I think the other thing that I'm always doing as well is at the same token as I'm hearing those answers I'm trying to feel out the person. I'm complete, when I interview there's times where I'm in complete Charlie Brown mode. I might not even hear a word you're saying. It is wah, 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 wah. I'm just going by the feel. The feel is what has guided me the whole time. Not necessarily the words, there's no black and white answer. I also find it intriguing that I ask almost everybody about siblings. It's maybe because I love my brother and sister so much. Um, and I don't judge if like your own only child, I don't say, oh, well you don't work well with others, all that dumb cliche shit. I know plenty of only children the most charismatic of all time and can work with everybody. I know only children that cliche don't play well with the others. I know plenty of jerk offs in this office that have 17 brothers and sisters and don't know how to play and so that's not what I'm looking for. I don't know, even know why I asked that question, Mark, uh, about the siblings but it makes, I'd like to think in a nice way it's because of my relationship with mine and, and how I, I like it uh, and so um, it's really the feeling and trying to reverse engineer the person. That's what I'm looking for, Mark. Those are the insights, my man. Shannon asks, how do you feel about Medium's new logo? I love their simplicity and this new logo's ruined that for me. Shannon, this is an interesting question. Uh, I'm an investor in Medium. That was the first investment we made in VaynerRC when I transitioned to that world. I'm a humongous fan. I am on the record thinking that Ev Williams is one of the less than a handful executives in the world that most understands consumer behavior of the modern internet world. He's proven it, blogger, Twitter, Medium. He's a beast. Talk about somebody that is inspirational to me and that I'm competitive with because straight chops coming out of every angle. That being said, this is one of the single worst logo shifts I've ever seen. I was devastated the other day. I didn't read about it, I didn't hear about it, I got on a plane, I, like my app updated, and I'm like, where's my black, what, what is this piece of crap? Holy crap, I hate it. I'm scared that this is gonna be passed on to medium employees and the, and the designer that made it uh, sees this. I, uh, here's the good news, it doesn't matter what I think. This is one man's point of view. There's plenty of people that may like it. People, I, don't, I don't know, just to answer this, the question straight, I really don't like it. I feel like it blends in with all the other stuff whereas the other one, now I could be old man McGee and I just got used to the other one, I don't know. Um, but to answer it straight, I don't like it at all. Uh, but here's the best part about names and logos. It doesn't matter. If they execute on the product and the service and the narrative and the user experience and the many other things, I truly believe the easiest thing to get over is the name and the logo. It's the execution. It's a good way to round up this whole thing, right? How do you be a good listener? You don't talk about it, you do it. What do you think about this logo or name? It doesn't matter because what you execute is what the end result is and it's just a very good narrative for this show and this theme of 150.5 episodes which is, it's about what you do. Keep talking, you know why I talk? Because I back that shit up and it feels double good. But a lot of you are talking and never back it up, period. And you need to start backing it up. As a matter of fact, let me remind you one more time, I didn't talk shit at all until I was 30 years old and already had the win on the board to be able to talk about it. So, for a lot of the youngsters, why don't you go out and execute and then talk shit. All of you social media or life coach experts at 23, get the f*** out of here with that. And number two, all you 40 year olds complaining about this, that, and the other thing, go do something about it. You're a grown ass man. You're a grown ass woman. Stop talking about not being able to do it or it's so hard or I don't get it or it's different or these 20 year olds are lazy. Stop complaining, go do. Go do. Doing. Doing execution is the only narrative. What you leave on the table as your body of work is the game. Right? And that's that. Simple as that. Period. Good. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Oh! I forgot. 
My Jets prediction. <laughs> my New York Jets prediction. I think the Jets roll in. Sheldon Richardson's back, number 91. I'm super pumped to see him back on the field. I think it matters. I think it slows down the Redskins' run. I do think the Redskins are better than most people think. I scouted them a little bit last week against the Falcons. They impressed me tremendously. Um, I do think that they played really well. I'm a little bit scared about their defense. I think our offense is slightly overrated in certain pockets. It's gonna be an intriguing matchup, but I think there's a chance that the defense just completely shuts down uh, the Redskins. I think Cousins throws a lot of questionable passes and so I think the Jets prevail at a home uh, 20 to 10. Jets over the Redskins. See ya. How much does Rick, the 23 year old, get? And give me the truth because the number isn't high. Yeah. Owner of the company? I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna probably get two, three million bucks compensation this year. Explain. Let's go further. I wanna know how a 23 year old gets All two right, to I got, three. I got a company founder. Okay. I am an old school web strategy guy. I know what works. Yep. Send the email, do the this, put in the time every day. Don't want to do that. I am resistive and it's a communication problem for me. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why don't you just do it for yourself? Yeah, that's the real question. Right? Like, yeah. cool, if all you know right. what the fuck you're talking about, do it for yourself. I do. I work harder and I'm smarter than all my 22 year olds. I'm better at social media than everybody at VaynerMedia. I'm looking at them right now, just to remind them. Like, so, 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 honestly, I think you're rolling with like trying to razz them. Razz yourself. Like, why are you trying to funnel through a 23-year-old? That's a badass answer. Thank, Thank you. you.